we've been dealing with brutally hot temperatures and excessive heat warnings, and that can lead to heat exhaustion or heat stroke. But do you know the difference between the two? Team 12's Tram Mai is here to explain. Hey guys, the National Weather Service has issued an excessive heat warning for Phoenix until 8 o'clock tonight. You already know on a day like today, you have to hydrate. But as soon as you get thirsty, it's too late. So here's what you need to know and five ways to avoid heat injury. Summers in Arizona never seem to get any easier. Extreme heat causing dangerous situations. You know it's best to stay inside, but for some it's unavoidable. Like for those who have to work, train or even go back to school. Dr. Megan McElhinney with Maricopa Medical Center says be careful. So heat injury can happen to anyone. The Phoenix Fire Department issued this warning for people on their Facebook page. Know the difference between heat exhaustion and heat stroke. When it comes to heat exhaustion, the symptoms include feeling faint or dizzy, excessive sweating, cool, pale, clammy skin, nausea or vomiting, having a rapid weak pulse and muscle cramps. A lot of times if you're not able to get someplace that's cooler, using evaporative cooling, meaning getting the patient wet, kind of spritzing with water and trying to use airflow to try and cool the patient. Heat stroke is more serious. You'll have a throbbing headache, no sweating, body temperature above 103, red hot dry skin, nausea or vomiting, rapid strong pulse, and you may even lose consciousness. That's when you have to call 911 and cool the person until help arrives. And it just doesn't strike people who aren't in good health. We even see it with athletes who are in the tip top shape. When you get hot enough, your body struggles with keeping your temperature in an appropriate range, and that's when people get into trouble. So here are five ways to avoid getting a heat-related injury. Number one, drink more than you should. If you're thirsty, your body's already recognized the fact that you're, you're fluid down and that you probably need to be drinking more fluid. Number two, hydrate before you even go outside or do any activities. Number three, take plenty of breaks. Number four, if you want to exercise outside, do it when it's cooler, early in the morning or evening. And number five, drink something with electrolytes. Anyone who does strenuous activities outside, either for sport or for work, um, always recommend some electrolyte replacement. Just try to keep those drinks with electrolytes low in sugar. Bottom line here, folks, doctors say know your limitations. When, how often, and how long you're outside. Back to you.